This is the listening test for levels from 3 to 5 of the Vietnam 6 level language proficiency test. There are three parts to the test. You will hear each part once. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have five minutes at the end of the test to transfer your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any question now, because you must not speak during the test. Hi, Marek. Are you looking forward to your holidays? Oh, Tanya, I can't wait. Where is it you're going? Is it camping on an island somewhere, or am I thinking of someone else? <laughs> well, we were going camping, but my dad's just bought a camper van, so we're going in that instead. It means you can go to other countries without having to get a flight, which is good in a way. But actually, I always used to enjoy sleeping in a tent. Yeah, I know what you mean. But it must be nice getting to see all the scenery along the way. I have to say the flight is my least favourite part of going abroad on holiday. Oh, I never mind it, actually. And the airport can be quite fun sometimes. <laughs> you must be joking. All those people and nothing to do except look round expensive shops. I mean, you always end up buying something you don't really want just because there's nothing else to do. Well, I don't. Anyway, where are you off to this year? Florida again? Well, I'm getting a bit old for Disneyland, Marek. Though my little brother would still like it. We're actually going somewhere new. It's like a sports camp where you stay with lots of other kids and learn how to do different activities. You mean you're going without your parents? Not exactly. I mean, they're there too, doing whatever they want. Golf, in my dad's case. But you only actually see them at mealtimes. Oh, sounds cool. But will you have to look after your little brother? No way. They divide you up according to age. He'll be doing football and swimming and all that, whereas I get to go water skiing. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't that cost a fortune? Well, quite a bit. So I'm just doing it on one of the days. But there's windsurfing and water polo too. Mm, I see. I have with me in the studio today Geoffrey Osland, who is the director of an environmental centre in Mid Wales. Geoffrey, welcome. Thank you. Geoffrey, what exactly is an environmental centre? Good question. Well, I suppose you could say that basically we're interested in protecting the environment, and that means looking at alternative technologies to provide energy for the future. I'm still not sure I understand. What does the centre do? It does a whole range of things. We opened 25 years ago, but in the last 10 years we've considerably expanded our activities and now we have lots of working displays. These displays are built on the site, which we occupy in the heart of the countryside, and include ways to use the sun and wind for power, as well as low energy buildings and different kinds of farming. We're open to the public all year round, and last year we had over 80,000 visitors. Everyone is welcome. We get casual visitors, tourists, environmental specialists, and lots of school children, especially primary school children, who are doing a project on some aspect of the environment. We also run courses for secondary schools, universities, and overseas students, and these courses are residential, obviously, because people come and stay for short periods of time. Uh, most of the courses last three days, although in the summer we run week-long courses. <laughs> Goodness, I didn't realise it was such a big operation. Oh, yes. Altogether, we have accommodation for about 70 people. Uh, when I say accommodation, I don't mean a, a luxury hotel. What we have are wooden cabins, which contain between two and five beds and are very simply furnished, although we do have a few single rooms available. There are common rooms for relaxation with facilities for making drinks. We also grow all our own food and meals are served in the centre restaurant. As you might expect, we only serve vegetarian food, no meat whatsoever. We don't allow people to bring meat in with them either. But uh, we have an excellent chef who prepares really imaginative vegetarian food, and uh, I've yet to hear anyone complain. The atmosphere is very relaxed and informal, but we do forbid people to smoke in the buildings.
Hello. Jonathan Briggs, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Do come in and sit down. Thanks. Right. Well, Jonathan, as we explained in your letter, in this part of the interview, we like to talk through your application form, your experience to date, etc. And then in the second part, you go for a group interview. Group interview. Yes, I understand. So, your first degree was in economics. Yes, but I also did politics as a major strand. And you graduated in 1989. And I see you've been doing some teaching. Yes, I worked as a volunteer teacher in West Africa. I was there for almost three years in total, from 1990 to、um, 1992. How interesting! What organisation was that with? It's not one of the major ones. It's called Teach South. All、oh, right. Yes, I have heard of it. It operates in several African countries, doesn't it? And what kind of school was it? A rural cooperative. Oh, a rural cooperative! How interesting. And what did you teach? A variety of things in different years.、Um, I did. With forms one to three, mainly geography, and some English with form five. Then, in my final year, I took on some agricultural science with the top year. That's form six. Right, quite a variety then. I also ran the school farm. How interesting! And how did you find the whole experience? I'll be honest with you. At the end of the first year, I really wanted to leave and come home. Oh, why was that? Well, I was very homesick at first and missed my family. Oh yes, I can understand that. And I also found it frustrating to have so few teaching resources.